Hello ladies and gentlemen, and this is your host, That Creepy Reading. Today I present to you something new, Urban Legend Wednesday. Today I'm going to present to you three stories. All three of them are going to be urban legends from my area or around the United States. Some of them may be true, some of them may be wrong. But in the end, I will allow you to decide what is truth and what is fiction. The first story we're going to read here is People Can Lick Too. Hannah was your everyday little girl. She liked playing with dolls, she hung out around the house, watched Blue's Clues and My Little Pony, among other things that little girls do. She would oftentimes go to friends' houses, and oftentimes she would get scared before having to return home due to a call to her mother. She had a deep fear of the dark, and even more of a perceived boogeyman. Well. One night may confirm little Hannah's ideas of fear. Something may confirm that that boogeyman (laughs) may be a real person. Hannah had a dog. She called him Labby. It was a nice golden lap dog. And to be honest, she loved him to death. One night, little Hannah decides to go to bed leaving early as, well, her mother told her to due to a previous punishment. Her parents go to bed, and she stays up quite a bit. Eventually, she puts her hand down, because her dog always slept under the bed, and wanted to feel her dog's lick, to help her reassure herself as she wasn't allowed to have nightlights anymore. She feels a lick, and then thanks the dog and then comfortably goes to sleep. Later that night, she wakes up due to a nightmare and freaks out, wakes up in a panic. She is sweating and startled and among other things, her heart is racing and due to this, she feels that her mouth is dry and simply leaves the bed, goes downstairs, turns on the faucet and fills up a glass of water. She drinks it. Heads back upstairs into her room, puts her hand by the under of her bed. She feels her dog lick her again. And of course, she thanks the dog and sleeps. By the time she wakes up, her parents are holding her, crying and shivering and quivering. She looks down, just to find that her her loved dog, Labby, was dead. It turns out that on her wall was a message that simply read, people can lick too. This next story is one that's rather close to my heart, something that's a tad different and not very well known. But if you live in the uh, Davisburg, Michigan area, and you live anywhere near King Road and West Ellis, you may understand that that crossroad is something of a curse. You see, this story is called Crossroads. A little bit of background information to help you get quite acquainted with this area that I'm going to tell you about. West Ellis Road connects two different roads together. One main road, Dixie, and one side road, which is known as King Road. This dirt road essentially forms two crossroads. One end is a main road and one end is simply a street. Now going into the actual story. Me and my cousin Noah were best friends, to be quite frank, uh, when we were quite younger. We would oftentimes leave in the middle of the night to either go to McDonald's, cause a ruckus, maybe do some ding-dong ditching, as that's what littler kids decided to do with their time. And this night was no different. We decided to leave, we were thirsty, had no soda, and decided to go up to the party store, which closed around 4am, 
We were unsure why it closed around that time. We just kind of accepted it. So it's around 2.45 when we leave. You walk down, past the crossroads, and simply head on into the grocery store. We go in there, I buy something called Town Club Soda, which is just a locally made soda that you can buy for about a dollar. I buy two of those, and my cousin buys himself a drink known as Rip It, which, as some of you may know, is just a cheap ripoff of... Monster. We start. We leave the store, start heading home with a pizza, you know, slice in our hand, and soda carrying around, we're laughing, we're having a riot, and we're pretty sure that we woke up half the neighborhood in the middle of this process. But nonetheless, me and my cousin had no issues. We walk through the rich kids' neighborhood, past all these huge, rich, expensive houses that, quite frankly, could fit a family of 30 in just about each of them, and then we move on to the crossroad. As we're walking down, laughing, having fun, my cousin instantly grabs my shoulder and pulls me back. I say, what the hell? What the fuck is going on? And then he simply shushes me and then points downward. I'm sitting there looking, and at first I I couldn't tell what exactly I was looking at. But upon further inspection, I, I started to see something that would terrify me to this day. It seems to be that it's some weird older lady. Now, if you've ever seen the Courage the Cowardly Dog cartoons, you may know what she looks like. Um, She has a really weird nightgown that almost, it could be either one of those nightgowns that older ladies tend to wear, or it could possibly be one of those gowns that uh, they would give you when you go into a hospital that leaves your butt showing, to be frank. This woman was of a larger build, and... Something seemed off about her. Although there were little lamp lights and some street lights still left on to illuminate her body, only thing you could see was a silhouette. Nothing more, nothing less. It just was a flat out silhouette. She appeared to be walking a dog and her head was turned as if she was tilting it in some way. Again, this is really odd as, again, usually old people, according to my perspective of them would be sleeping at this time and would have no reason to be up and or walking a dog in that case she had her head tilted in a very uncomfortable looking way and although i only saw her moving for roughly a minute maybe two i could definitely tell that there was something wrong with her walking her legs seemed to be moving at a faster walking pace as if she was speed walking. However, her movement speed was about a run or a full length sprint. Really disjointed. Her left arm seemed to be ragdolling or limp. My cousin and I stared for, again, this minute as we simply say to ourselves, what the fuck was that? I and my cousin decided to go home on that day. We go into our house, and we decided to research this area, as anyone would do who just saw that. Because, again, we, we, we would like to believe that there was a natural, reasonable s- explanation for this. But apparently there was a little bit something more to this little crossroad. On the lake, which the crossroad is connected to, it seems that a older lady was... Her name was uh, Gloria, I believe, was drowned there. Apparently, her family didn't want to really pay or deal with the cost of living for her and decided to give her a painless death, so to speak. She was drowned in the lake in the backyard right there, in about two feet of water. Reportedly, it took her quite a bit to actually drown, lasting up to about five minutes before her pulse decided to end. Gloria was supposedly this lovely woman who lived there, and when she was killed, it was very sad and mourned by the community, and it wasn't until months later till they actually discovered her body in the water. Now, supposedly, as the story goes, her children 
as in her children, not her grandchildren, decided to drown her in the lake. But other sides may still persist. All that is known is that to this day, if you go to the crossing of West Ellis Road and King Road at exactly 3.30 a.m., most mornings you can catch this shadow woman who we presume to be the spirit of Gloria. Her intent seems to be unknown. But as someone who actually witnessed her coming about, I can honestly say that it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like this energy is very warming. And it feels that she may have some unleft business. <laughs> The third and final urban legend for tonight is one that is near and dear to my heart, and although I can't have any testament to the validity of the story, this one is simply known as... Aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light? Stephanie and Jessica were two roommates who could be as opposite as opposites can be. One of them was a gothic, darker woman who enjoyed to spend her time on online chat rooms speaking of things of the occult, as that's what interests her. A true creepypasta fan, if there was one at the time that she was... You know. And then we got Stephanie. A true bookworm, a enjoyer of the finer arts, and one who simply wanted to go through college as fast and as quick as can be, so she could become a doctor and make all the money that her parents wanted her to make when she was younger. Through her life, she was a straight-A student, hit the books, and did her best to become the best that she could be. She enjoyed quiet and didn't make many friends growing up. I mean, like, she had a few here and there, but most of the time they would just talk through text or say hi and maybe catch that occasional movie on the weekend. Well, she and her other friend decided to leave the house for the night, leaving our dark, occult woman to herself. She left, had a study session, watched a movie, and was de-stressing for finals. Well, this darker lady was hitting someone up in a online chat room. She then proceeds to go to bed as it started to grow late and laid down for a peaceful night's rest. Well, Stephanie, she came home and before she was able to turn on the light, she noticed that her roommate was sleeping nice and sound and out of fear for another screaming match for what could possibly be yet another sleepless night, especially before a final, she decides to leave the lights off as that would be the more polite thing to do when, you have a, when you're living with a roommate. She goes to bed in her own bed and then the morning comes. She gets out of bed notices an off smell. At first she doesn't do anything about it, simply going into the kitchen area and grabbing some orange juice. No sooner than she poured her cup to take her first sip, she took a glance into her roommate's room. What she saw made to terrify her to this very day. Apparently, her roommate's neck was slashed, arms cut, and missing a leg, believe it or not. To this day, they don't know where the leg went, it just was missing. A horrible, grotesque scene seemed to take place in the next room. And to top it all off, right above her roommate's headboard onto her bed, you could see the message inscribed. Aren't you glad you didn't turn on the lights? Police soon came, reported, and to this day, this case goes unsolved and rather cold. She moved to a different dorm room, and that room was closed in the poor state of Virginia. To this day, no one knows who may have committed the crime, but her story rings true to many people's ears across the United States as it's a rather odd one. Were these stories true? Could you discern fact from fiction? Only time will tell, so I guess all you can really do is 
Sit back, relax, turn down the lights, and prepare to be scared. <laughs> Welcome to Urban Legend Wednesday.